Welcome to Alexandria. The ports of Alexandria were a major commercial hub, effectively connecting Egypt with the Mediterranean regions and beyond. A tremendous amount of materials and goods flowed through the city on a daily basis. The large port market was called the Emporion. It was there that merchandise was traded by the ship owners, called Nakliros. Food and other artisan work streamed out of Egypt. Ceramics, glass, golden rings, and minted coinage. The local potters using traditional Egyptian techniques competed with those from abroad, and the textile industry flourished. What Egypt did not produce itself was acquired through trade using local resources such as wheat and papyrus. Most sought after was pine wood from Syria iron and marble from the Greek islands, gold from Spain, and exotic fruits from Europe. All this commercial activity contributed to the already decadent wealth of the city. The wood imported to Port Mariotis through Alexandria's seaward ports was used in the nearby shipyards, where most of Egypt's ships were built. Employing tens of thousands of shipbuilders, the shipyards contributed to establishing the Egyptian fleet as one of the mightiest of the era. Any wood not used in shipbuilding was further disseminated through Egypt for various purposes. The southern port of Lake Mariotis was the biggest in Alexandria. Save for a branch angling westward, the lake's size in the Ptolemaic era was roughly 40 to 50 kilometers from north to south. Its waters were maintained by a steady runoff from the Nile. In addition to the lake, a man-made canal was created to assist in the transfer of goods from the city to the port using barges, though it is not represented in the game due to its size. Banking was one of the most distinctive innovations brought by the Greeks to Egypt. The centerpiece of Alexandria's wealth was the royal systematization of taxes on almost everything. Basic items such as salt, oil, beer, wheat, and linen were heavily taxed. As a result, the royal treasury of Alexandria was able to ensure the economic stability of most of the administrative areas of Egypt. Thank <laughs> you. 
By the late 12th century, the channel feeding the lake from the Nile silted up. Lake Mariotis lost its connection to the Mediterranean, as well as most of its water, as the lake slowly evaporated to a fraction of its former size. In modern times, Lake Mariotis is being kept alive through irrigation. However, only about 17% of its original size remains. Welcome to Alexandria, city of celebration. Like most Greek cities, Alexandria offered multiple forms of entertainment. Most were related to cults, religious practices, and the festivities surrounding those practices. Among those festivities, the most important ones were the dynastic celebrations, instituted in honor of the deified Ptolemaic kings and queens. These celebrations could go on for many days and included sacrifices, offerings, processions, and public banquets. Games and competitions were organized whenever possible in locations such as the stadium, the hippodrome, and the gymnasium. The residents of Alexandria favored such events where athletes, poets, and musicians from Egypt and other cities of the Greek world competed. Like all good Greek cities, Alexandria had a theater. The architecture of this structure is Roman in style. This is because the team duplicated a theater from Cyrene. Roman theaters were usually semicircular and built from scratch on a flat area with structures designed to enhance oration. Greek theaters were more oblong in shape, similar to a horseshoe and favored the slopes of natural hills to support their acoustics. At the theater, one could witness the plays of contemporary comic and tragic authors. The play you are witnessing below is Menander's Discolos, more commonly known as the Grouch, a late and popular entry in the Greek comedies.
Welcome to Education in Alexandria. The education of young Alexandrians did not differ from the one generally dispensed elsewhere in ancient Greece. At the age of seven, the child was taken in charge by a tutor, who then became responsible for instilling an elementary education as well as good moral principles. Teaching was generally done outside, in the open air. In the gymnasium, students were taught not only sports, but also topics such as rhetoric, philosophy, music, and poetry. All things deemed essential to one's education at the time. Here, both girls and boys are shown attending a class given by one of the rhetoricians of the era. The team made the choice to show both genders attending class within the context of the game world. Even though it is historically inaccurate, the team felt it was not necessary to prioritize historical sexism over inclusive gameplay. Cool. 